I'm Lucas. And this is our van life. This is our van tour. Van tour? Hi, I'm Maggie. And I'm Lucas. And this is our van tour. We've been pitching up a tent every weekend when we were climbing and surfing. And there was a point in which we said, well, definitely we, we need a van. We got a bit carried away and we ended up living in a van full time for over six months now. It kind of escalated really quickly. It went from a from, small... Yeah, a small high <laughs> to a big <laughs> long wheel base printer van. Uh, but yeah, we're loving it. It took us a few months to build the van. We, we did it all ourselves. Well, I mean, I mainly did the sanding and painting. Lucas did most of the woodworking. And what, what I like most about the van is that we have everything with us all the time. We have all the gear we need. So one weekend we decide to go climbing and then maybe the weather is not very good. We can go surfing and we still have all the stuff with us all the time. So definitely that freedom is something that I like. One of the main things we wanted to do with this van was to make it really comfortable. So the reason why we chose a sprinter was because we could stand up inside the van, stand up and cook and even on a cold winter day we can shut the door and we are just are, you know, in our own little home. Having a fixed bed is, is a lot more comfortable. We kind of wanted somewhere where if we get back from a huge adventure we just like to crash and then wake up and do it all again the next day. So welcome to the outside of our van. This is where we fill up the water. I opted to put a 70 litre water tank underneath the van and I do not regret it one bit because it's huge, it takes up yeah, 70 litres of space which is quite a large tank and this goes hand in hand as well with why we sort of didn't want to get a shower because even 70 litres, all we do is wash dishes and drink, we will last roughly about four days and obviously we don't want to have to go back to a city town and, and fill up and get water. Moving along, this is the garage. This is definitely my favorite part of the van. Um, having a raised bed, this is definitely why you do it because if you have a lot of gear and you know you want to store it in the back here, we can kind of do whatever we feel like on the weekend and not feel trapped because we didn't bring something or something didn't fit in the van. So say for instance, turn the light on here. So we got the first thing is our surfboard. So look, we can fit six foot long surfboards all the way down there. Um, and they honestly do not uh, move or get damaged because they have their own sort of little section here. Um, we obviously got our climbing packs. In the back here you can see there's our barbecue, we got our wetsuits, um, we got some fishing gear in there. My main thing as well that we would really recommend is that we've got a little toolkit with basic socket sand, wrench, sort of screwdrivers, that sort of stuff, just in case something does happen. So say if we wanted to go bouldering, when it's too cold to go sports climbing, we can just grab our mats. We got the mats, we're going boulder, and you know. Um, the other thing that we've got that's really important is our hose. So it's just a food grade hose. So we can fill up, while we're filling up petrol, we just fill up water at the same time. So this is my favorite part of the garage, is we've got this super long 100 kilogram weighted drawer. Um, it holds all of our climbing gear. So yeah, we've got our trad rack here, if we want to go trad climbing, sports rack, double ropes, harnesses. Um, shoes, whatever basically we need at the time. Um, and also down here we've got a bit of storage for fishing rods and, and reels. And we've also got our stick clip. So if the start of a sports climb is a bit hard, we can just clip that. We've got some trekking poles as well. And when we do trekking, but even though we never do trekking. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for the garage. So yeah, I'll pass it up to Maggie to show you the exercise. Welcome to the inside of our van. When we designed our kitchen, it was supposed to be smaller, but then I got really excited and bought this massive fridge, uh, 140 liters. Definitely, definitely worth it. Um, the best part is the freezer, so we can store our frozen veggies, have a cheesecake, for example, or have um, ice cream if we want to. Huge storage veggies here, so we can have some beers as well. Uh, definitely a good, good buy. So this is our cooktop and it even has an oven as well. Really easy to make pizzas, to make pies.
pies, bread, we love it. Um, it runs off gas and we have a gas bottle here underneath the seat. It lasts for about two months, so really good. Then we have our sink, which is rounded. Um, we're gonna buy a square sink and then we realize that all of our plates, fry pans, saucepans, they are all rounded. So really, really efficient with water when you're washing. Then our tap, we love it as well. So you can move it in and out. Has two settings, this setting, that setting as well. So we have lots of storage in the van. So we have all of our Tupperware, some flowers and breakfast cereal in the first one. We have more Tupperware and some cans. And then in the third one, we have all of our jams, sugar, tea, some oil as well. So we have our cutlery in the first one. And then we have our plates, all of our glasses in the second one, some bowls as well. This is the best part, coffee mugs. <laughs> and then on the third one, we have all of our spices, our bread dough, onions and some, some other things. And then in the bis this big one, we have saucepans and fry pans as well. So, so yeah, lots of storage, it's really important to, to to have a, a nice kitchen and feel like you're still in the house while in the van. The other great thing that we have is our coffee machine. We like drinking coffee and definitely worth it. We had to buy a power inverter with at least 2000 watts uh, and it runs perfectly. Then we have the dining area, um, two seats and then the table slides. And we can have dinner together, we use the computer, um, we love it and best thing is that you can go back in so then we have the space and that's it done then we have the bed down the sides we can keep books and some other things um, it's really really handy we have 240 here and then we have some 12 volt charger there we have reading lights as well in case one of us wants to read this is our blackout blind. Uh, it's really handy if we are sleeping like in the city. Nobody can tell we are inside, it's really stealth. Um, magnets on the sides. So really handy as well. And that's it, done. We went with the solar setup only. Uh, it's four 100 watt panels on the roof. It's plenty enough, especially in Australia. We got mono crystal panels just because they're better at absorbing UV in the shade and in cloudy days. So in regards to the battery of the van, we just went with a basic 240 amp hour AGM battery. Maybe it's kind of borderline whether we need another one or not. But right now, we can power our coffee machine and all these lights, they don't really use that much as they're 12 volts. We have a pure sine wave inverter, which is 1800 watts, which is plenty enough to run this coffee machine. Uh, we have things like a digital taco meter to display how much water we have in the tanks. We went with all Renology in regards to the um, solar charge controller, which is an MPPT and that's a 40 amp hour one. There's our basic um, on and off switch for our uh, sine wave inverter and these switches here, I kind of put them here and they don't really have a use yet. <laughs> and that's the end of our van tour. Thanks for watching. If you guys have enjoyed our van build and enjoyed watching our van tour, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. And if you're feeling the love, don't forget to smash that subscribe button Thanks so much again for tuning in. See, See you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.